Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today. And we pray that as we look into your word now, you will open our eyes to see the truth reserved and preserved for every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that as we study these scriptures, you will make us wise by what we read, by what we study in Jesus' name. So that in every act, in every decision, in every move we make, it will be according to your word in Jesus' name. Be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. In our study we've come to Joshua chapter 7, a very important chapter for every individual Christian and for the church as a whole. Up to this point, Israel had been under Joshua and they had witnessed memorable victory. They had been going from strength to strength. As we have been observing the people of Israel under the leadership of Joshua, we have seen them in strict obedience to divine commands. And these things had marked their every step, every decision, and every movement. Now they had conquered Jericho. And we want to see what followed after the defeat of Jericho, after the great victory that they had in Jericho. And I believe that there is a great lesson for us to learn in what we're looking at today. Defeat after victory. This will show you why some people, after getting the victory, they do not continue in the victory. This will show you why a church, a group of believers, after having some victory, they do not continue in the victory. This will show you why a whole denomination of a number of branches may not continue in victory if they have got victory before. Immediately, following the victory at Jericho, Israel suffered humiliating defeat at a much weaker town of Ai. Why was this so? A member of the tribe of Judah had committed a grievous sin, and the whole nation suffered in consequence as there was a serpent in Eden, and a Judas among the apostles, so there was an Achan in the midst of an obedient Israel. As usual, we're going to divide the chapter into three sections. Section one, sin and defeat. Section two, supplication and revelation. Section three, discipline and judgment. Let's look at section one, sin and defeat. I'm reading to you from Joshua chapter seven. Please open your Bible. Joshua chapter 7, from verse 1 through to verse 5. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Kemai, the son of Zabdiah, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people, about three thousand men. And they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them, about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. This is the first defeat we're reading about in the midst of the children of Israel since Joshua took the leadership of the people of Israel. Let us note the sequence of the things that happened here. They had just conquered Jericho. And if you look at the last chapter, that is chapter 6, verse 27. So, the Lord was with Joshua. And his fame was noised throughout all the country. The Lord had magnified Joshua. He had glorified himself in Israel. And they had seen signal victory, memorable victory, as they conquered Jericho. Everybody knew about it. 
Everyone heard about it. Number one, let us understand the heart and the attitude of Joshua. He didn't feel it was time to rest. He didn't feel it was time to feast and celebrate. He did not feel that now that we have conquered Jericho, and now that the victory is noised about, and this man was becoming popular and famous, then he should begin to sound his trumpet as if all the battles had ended. Many, what we discover in the lives of many people is that immediately they have got a particular victory. They stop, they rest, they celebrate, they feast. Somebody has just got married and then he's resting. He doesn't pray as he used to pray. He doesn't find out things from the word of God as he used to. Or somebody has just got a child and he thinks, this is wonderful, God has answered my prayer. And there is no more progress in the spiritual life. A student has just passed an exam and he feels the whole of life is ascended. He now must be happy and celebrate. Somebody has just got a work and it had been a victorious thing. He doesn't feel that he must move on. But concerning Joshua, after that victory, after the blessing that he received, he said, it's not time for resting. It's not time for feasting. And it is not time for celebration. We must move on. Whatever you have got, whatever victory you have won, move on. You have been saved, don't rest, move on. You have been sanctified, that's a great victory over the Adamic nature, move on. You have even been baptized in the Holy Ghost, move on. God has prospered you, you have become selected as one of the leaders and workers in the church of God, move on. Whatever victories we have got, don't rest. It is not time for feasting and celebration yet, keep on moving. And then he did another thing. Even though AI was very small, he didn't feel he should move on blindly. It is good to move on, but don't move on blindly. Find out first. Examine things. Make a survey. Do some examining of the situation. He sent some people to spy out the land. You see, Joshua is giving us a very good example. We should not move or walk blindly. We should investigate and find out. Even while we're depending upon the promises of the Lord, the people came back, all the people that he sent. And as they came back, they gave the report. That was good. You need to give a report when you have been sent on an errand. But then they did something bad. They didn't just stop at giving a report. They counseled their commander-in-chief. You see, you should know your limit as a subordinate. As somebody who has been sent on an errand, know your limit. If you have been told to survey, to examine, to find out something, when you come back, give your report and stop there. You are told to find out something about somebody in the zone. Maybe there is uh, something that has been done, and you are told, this is your fellowship area, this is your community, go and find it out. When you come back, give your report, stop there. You are asked a question. As to, what do you know about this? What do you know about this? When you give your answer, stop there. Don't go ahead to give an advice, a counsel, a suggestion, an opinion. You see, when the people came back, after they had given their report, they now gave a counsel. They now gave a, an opinion. And they told Joshua, they said, let not all the people go up. Because there are just about a few, a few people there. Send just about two or three thousand people. You see that advice? It was like an advice of kindness. An advice of love. Saying, do not overlabor yourself. Do not send all these people to go through all the rigmarole, all the labor, all the endeavor of making war. Just a few of them will do. And Joshua thought this was nice. You see, sometimes advice can make you to forget the word of God. You see, sometimes advice can make you to forget ex exactly the step that God wanted you to take. You see, many years before this time, God had instructed Joshua through that leader, Moses, as to how every decision ought to be taken. Look at Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27. I'm reading to you from verse 18. And you will see what instruction Joshua had been given concerning taking decisions. Numbers 27 verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him, and set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. 
and thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his word, at the word of Eliezer the priest, at his word shall he go out, and at his word shall they come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. You see that? Moses had carefully given him the word of the Lord. When hands were laid upon him, and when he received the Spirit of God, he had been told, never take any decision without checking up, without praying through, without getting revelation from above. And how do you get that revelation from above? In his own case, because it was in the Old Testament dispensation. He was to go before the priest, Elisa in particular. And Eliezer being the priest who represented the nation before God and represented God before the people will find out for him and will give him counsel according to inspired revelation. At that word will he go out, whether against Ai or against any group of people. At that word will he, will he come in. He will make every move. He will take every decision by the word of the Lord through Eliezer. And it says, he, both he and all the children of Israel with him. But these advisors, they made him to forget the word of the Lord for him. You know, that's what happens many times. Your advisors will make you to forget that you should listen to the voice of the Savior. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Many times, your advisors will make you to forget the voice of the Spirit. Many times, your advisors will make you to forget the light of Scripture. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Many times, your advisors will make you to forget that you are not to take any step or make any move by their opinion, by their advice. And so they came and they told Joshua. They said, Joshua, we'll see in the place, very small place indeed, now, send just about two or three thousand people there. And this time, it was unfortunate for Joshua. Because, you know, he didn't know something that was very secret. At this time, among the people of Israel. So he felt, this is good advice. Many things that look good to you, eternally may ruin you. Many things that look nice to you, even temporarily here, in the world here, may completely destroy you. If you have a bosom friend and you exalt that friend above the Bible, that friend, you think she's talking nice, leading you aright, and telling you what you ought to do, their advice can ruin your life completely. Sometimes you have a family problem. And these people that, you know, are the, you know, well-wishers and the advisors and the opinion leaders, they do not allow you to depend upon Christ, the Savior, the Shepherd, or the Spirit of God, or the Word of God. And the advice they give, you'll think, this is wonderful advice. But my friend, this thing can defeat your life, defeat your family, and scatter everything in your life. Look at the Word of God and see what step the Lord wants you to take. Joshua, at this time, followed their advice and he sent the two or three thousand people when the leader becomes subordinate to the people under him there will be trouble when the leader instead of following the directive from above begins to follow directives from below a person who had been ruling over the people leading the people guiding the people instead of following the advice or following the word of god from above he follows the advice from beneath from below from the people that are subordinate to him he will get into trouble and when the people faced ai the small people the people of ai they drove them back they killed 36 people they lost their lives you see when you follow wrong advice it can claim your life it can claim the lives of people around you these 36 people died prematurely they shouldn't have died except by following that advice these 36 people if they were fathers in their families they were not able to continue keeping a watch over their families and taking care of their children because joshua followed the wrong advice you know if you're in leadership position advice will come from various directions and you need to keep your head straight and keep your eyes fixed on christ looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith and you know some people they'll say well that man he never takes advice 
that man he never listens to people that man is only bible is only god is only the spirit of god that's good leadership when you never take advice from you know this one and this one and that one and you keep your eyes on the bible you have a problem in your family you keep your eyes on the bible you have a problem in the church you keep your eyes on the bible you have a problem in your place of work you keep your eyes on the bible the people were defeated and these people now they came back and they said we're defeated 36 people have gone there was sorrow in the families of those 36 people so in the whole nation because of the defeat of these people now what joshua did not realize is this that there was sin in the camp look at the very first verse verse one starts with but if you connect that with verse 27 so the lord was with joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country but something good had been going on but a great victory had been won but everybody had been talking about how great joshua was but the lord had magnified joshua in a very magnificent manner but what was about that's what you ought to find out in your life every time there is victory find out if there is a but around the corner every time it appears that you are rejoicing every time it appears everybody is praising you everybody is honoring you everybody is magnifying you find out if there is a but in your life a birch in your family, a birch in your district, a birch in your church. It says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in their corset sin. For Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, they of the tribe of Judah took of their corset sin, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Let us notice that in the previous chapter, they had been commanded as to what they should do. They had been commanded as to how they should move. They had been commanded as to how they will consecrate everything that they got in the city unto the Lord. Look at chapter 6, reading from verse 18. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing. Lest ye make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it, but all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. They have been given the commandment that they will not take any of these things to themselves, that they will only consecrate everything unto the Lord. But Achan committed a trespass. He committed a sin. The sin was the sin of theft. More than that, it was a sin of sacrilege. That means, what should have been consecrated to God, used by God alone, this man took it to himself. And he appropriated the sin that belonged unto the Lord. But here we learn a lesson. Nobody knew in the whole of Israel except his family and his family will not reveal the thing his family agreed with him and they buried that thing and they hid that thing and even though joshua did not know even though the elders in israel did not know even though the people of israel did not know god knew what a great lesson you cannot hide from god you may do that thing in the night or in the village or far away from the sight and the view of church members but god knows everything in proverbs chapter 15 proverbs chapter 15 verse 3 the eyes of the lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good have you stolen god knows you are you living in sin privately adultery or fornication he knows about it all is there a confessiousness that is hiding in your heart? Love of money? He knows about it all. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. He saw him. And as he saw him, the children of Israel suffered for it. Now that, that is not the only time in the Bible when only one person sees. And then the people that are associated with that sinner, they suffer as a result of the sin. Look at Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Reading from verse 3. But 
Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a sheep going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare whereof thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the sheep was like to be broken. And the mariners were afraid, and cried every man to his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the sheep into the sea, to lighten each of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the sheep, and he lay and was fast asleep. You know, many times, if you do not know the lives of people, you fellowship with them, you agree with them, you even get into such a communion and concord with them, it appears you want to join business with them. And yet you do not know the man you may be joining business with is an Achan. Somebody has introduced him to you and has said he studied at so and such college. And he's graduated because of his graduation, he's got this and this experience. And uh, he's even a believer. Do you know that he's even attending our church? Oh, and you say that's wonderful. I've been looking for a business partner, and you get into partnership with Achan. The whole thing will collapse. Or it may be that you want to get married, and uh, you know this fellow comes, and he's just come to the Lagos church. He said, I've been in deeper life in another place. And uh, you know, as a member of deeper life, he begins to tell you this doctrine, and this doctrine, and this doctrine. You will say, I will pray about it. Because before I can marry, I must pray. And other people, instead of leaving you to pray, they begin to tell you, Ah, oh, brother, don't waste time. Sister, don't waste time. That fellow is a real child of God. Get into the agreement because you know he's getting old and you are getting old and do this in time. And without you praying through on your own, you get into an agreement. You marry an Achan. You will suffer for it. Other people will tell you, We're establishing a church now. Maybe they have been in this church before. And what they did, you don't know. Because we didn't make any public announcement. But we discovered them to be an Achan. We discovered them to be a backslider. We discovered them to be people that were not living according to the word of God. And we told them, please go and pray. Please go and settle your life. And we didn't make any announcement about it. And then you discovered that fellow. And he begins to tell you, well, uh, the Lord is speaking to me. He didn't say it's under rebuke under correction, under discipline. The Lord is speaking to me to establish this ministry. And you know, the Lord is giving me revelation. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be so marvelous. He has revealed to me, God will do this and this and that. We're going to launch against, you know, all these territories and win a lot of people to the Lord. And uh, you say, well, uh, let me just uh, see if I can be with you. Well, he says, uh, don't waste time because, you know, next week we're going to East Africa. The other week we're going to, you know, southern part of Africa. The other time we're going to Europe and we're going to America and I've got my passport. How about you filling the funds for your passport? You don't pray through. You just join. You join an Achan team. You'll suffer for it. You see these people with Jonah. Jonah just paid for his uh, sale and he said, I want to travel with you. If somebody wants to travel this life's journey with you, find out who is this fellow. Is he a real child of God? Is he an Achan? A Jonah? A Judas Iscariot? Find out before you agree with an individual. All these people got into trouble because they didn't find out. Well, eventually, when they came back in defeat, Joshua had to do something. Let's go back to Joshua chapter 7. Reading from verse 6. And Joshua wrenched his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Please, let's learn from Joshua. What if you were a leader and you sent out these people, two or three thousand people, and as they went out in battle, none of the people of Ai died, but 36 people in Israel died. Maybe the very first reaction from you may be to blame the people and tell them you are cowards. You didn't do well. And you didn't win the victory. You have brought this nation of Israel to shame now. Joshua never blamed the people. Maybe what you would have done is to call the people that advised you before and said, look at what you got me into. Because of your advice, I didn't pray through. You know, when you have got married, and eventually you discover you took a wrong step, and now there is a problem in the marriage, 
the weak, because of the weakness and the carnality of man. Maybe the thing you do is to go back to the people that told you to marry that fellow, and you, you are the one at fault. You should have prayed. But you see, Joshua did not go to them. He did not blame them. He went to God. Some people, when they have made a mistake, or when they have committed a sin, and they are seeing the repercussion, the consequence of the sin they have done wrongly, they will not go back to God. They will be afraid of God. They will be so ashamed of themselves. They will run away from God. But Joshua went near unto God. He rent his clothes. He fell upon his face before the ark of the Lord. Let us learn a lesson here. When trouble comes, don't accuse people. Don't blame people. Don't run away from God. Go before the Lord in prayer and find out why this is so. He made his supplication. Verse 7. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought these people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would God we had been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan? O oh Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turneth their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall environ us round, and cut off our name from the earth. What, and what will thou do unto thy great name? Now you see the way Joshua was praying. He wasn't uh, uttering his word. He wasn't trying to impress the children of Israel with the way he spoke. Now let us understand. When you pray with burden in your heart, your grammar may not be correct, but your prayer will reach the ears of God. When you pray, with, when there's confusion in the heart, and when there is a kind of problem in your life, and you are praying, now the way you are praying, it may not seem as if your grammar, the structure, the ordering of your sentences are correct. That's not the point. The point is, you are pouring out your heart before the Lord. Look at Psalm 102. Psalm 102. Verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Now, when this person cried, in what condition was he? Look at the title. That is, under Psalm 102, before verse 1, the title, A Prayer of the Afflicted. When he is overwhelmed and poureth out his complaints before the Lord. What Joshua was doing here is that he was pouring out his complaints before the Lord. He was overwhelmed. He was troubled. He was afflicted. The defeat had taken him by surprise. It appeared that this defeat contradicted the promise that God gave him that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of thy life. Because of that overwhelming affliction and experience, he just poured out his heart before the Lord. And um, he said things that if you are analyzing them, analyzing the structure and the grammar, you will think, why is Joshua praying like this? Why was Joshua saying, have you they brought us here to deliver us to the hands of the Amorites? Why was he talking to God and he was saying, have you brought us in here to destroy us? Why was he saying, would God we had been content or satisfied to dwell on the other side, Jordan? But please understand, God never condemned Joshua the way he prayed. He knew that he was talking out of agony out of affliction when you pray out of the agony of your heart because of the defeat you have experienced because of the problem you have god does not condemn you he answers prayer and if you pray today i believe he will answer your prayer in jesus name Amen. now we need to understand that whenever defeat happens like this people of god are always sorrowful whenever there is a defeat look at first samuel chapter 4 first samuel chapter 4 from verse 10. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was meeting, and he fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen, and the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent. That's exactly what Joshua did. And then it says, with earth upon his head. Because of the agony, because of the body, this is what he had on the head. And then eventually God 
answered Joshua by pointing out the reason for the defeat. If we're defeated in our lives, there's a reason. If we go to God in prayer, he will reveal that reason. If you will make your supplication, God will give you the revelation. Let's look at Joshua chapter 7 from verse 10. Joshua chapter 7, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou down upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. For they have even taken up their corset thing, and have also stolen, and assembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were a cause. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy their cursed thing from among you. The Lord answered Joshua by pointing to him the secret thing that he did not know. And God pointed out in six details what Achan had done. If you look at that uh, verse 11 very well, you will see the statement, one, Israel hath sinned. Number two, they have also transgressed my covenant. Number three, they have taken up the accursed thing. Number four, they have stolen. Number five, and dissembled also. Number six, and they have put it even among their own store. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. The Lord did not leave them in darkness. You see, when the Lord points out our fault, it's because he loves us. When the Lord points out the reason for our defeat, it's because he loves us. When the Lord tells us something is wrong with our lives, something is wrong with the church, or something is wrong somewhere, it is because he loves us. In his love, he pointed out what they couldn't have known on their own. And the Lord still reveals that today. When the Lord forsakes a group of people, he never answers them. At the time of Saul, the king of Israel, when they asked, the Lord never opened up to Saul. He just left him alone, and eventually the man died without any revelation from the Lord. But concerning Joshua, the Lord revealed unto him. And then he told him they must deal with that sin before they can be allowed to move on in the victory of the Lord. Why? Because of Psalm 66. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If we know there is an Achan in the group, if we know there is a backslider in the midst of the people of God, and we do not deal with the sin, rebuke the sin, correct the sin, chastise the backslider, discipline him, if we just part sin at the back, and if we just compromise and look away and we say, well, everybody has his weakness. Achan's weakness is uh, covetousness and stealing. And since everybody has his weakness, no discipline, no rebuke, no correction. The Lord said, if you do not deal with that sin, I will no more be with you. How now did they find out the individual? From verse 13. Up, sanctify the people. And say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For, the, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the families which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed sin shall be burnt with fire. He and all, his, all that he has. Because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord. Because he has wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken. Now this means that they left every activity of warfare and they dealt with the sin in the midst. You see what the people of God are to do whenever there is sin in the camp and whenever there is defeat, we are to leave all the activities of warfare against the territory of Satan and we are to deal with the problem on the inside. You cannot fight 
a battle with the outside enemy if there is sin within the assembly of the people of God. That is why the church should always be holy. The church should always be pure. And if there is a problem of sin in the church, in the midst of the people of God, instead of just running on evangelism, foreign mission, home mission, and activity, and uh, activity in the district and everywhere, instead of just running on like that, we settle down, discover the sin, discover the problem, deal with it. It is after we have dealt with the problem of sin, we can go ahead and do whatever the Lord wants us to do. And in verse 17, he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zehites, and he brought the family of the Zehites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought the household man by man, by man and Achan, the son of Kamai, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel. That is, tell the truth and let God be glorified. Open up and let us know that God is a God of truth. Tell me what really you have done and let the people of God rejoice that we have discovered what is wrong in the midst of the people of God so that eventually we'll be able to win victory over the Canaanites and God will get the glory. Make confession, make confession unto him. Tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done when I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels of weight. Then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the, in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Over here, they discovered who was the sinner. Let us understand, God knows all things. Do you believe that? Whatever you do in secret, whatever you practice behind closed doors, he knows everything. And if it is a problem to the church of God, if the church will pray, God will reveal every hidden thing. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 47. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings, a revealer of secrets. A revealer of secrets. And you know today, God still reveals secrets to the people of God. If we will depend upon the Lord and be filled with the Spirit of God. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. From verse 1, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the prize, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? The Lord knew it. The Spirit of God knew it. It was revealed unto Peter. Can it be revealed today? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. Verse 10. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the signing of spirits. And so the Lord still reveals secrets today. None of us can hide from the Lord. And whatever, if you are living in sin, secret sin, your sin will find you out. Except you repent. And bring everything under the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord knows everything and you will not continue to hide. He will bring out that sin. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. There is neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open 
unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That means none of us can hide. You do that thing in the night, you do it in the day, you do it when other people are not there. The Lord knows the secret and he will reveal the secret to the people of God, the people that fear him. And so Joshua knew the secret, but they needed to deal with the sin after they knew about the sin that the man had done. Let's now go to point three, discipline and judgment. Discipline and judgment. Joshua chapter 7 from verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent. And behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and led them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, because they knew all about it when he was digging the ground and hiding the thing. Because they were party to it. They too they suffered in the judgment. And his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Acre. Before I go on with the comments, let me just point out something here very, very clearly. You see, these people, they were sincere people. Joshua and the children of Israel. When they saw that Achan had committed that sin, they needed to deal with that sin. But I want you to understand here, Joshua did not take his oxen and asses and sheep to himself and say, you are the one that has sinned, you will be judged, but all your, all your cattle, all your oxen, all your sheep, all your asses, bring them to me here. That, becomes, that belongs to me now. That will belong to me and be my possession. You see some churches, when they discipline an individual, they will say, you are under discipline because you have committed sin. Then they will still say, where is your tithe? Where is your offering? Where is your money? They will say, all that you promised before, that you are going to, com uh, you are going to contribute to the missionary fund. Eh, bring your money. It is you under discipline. It is you that committed adultery. It is you that committed fornication. All the money that you should have paid into the account of the missionary post or into the account of this, you still bring your money. They are not sincere. If somebody is not living right and that person is under discipline, then let him pray. Let him settle his life until sin is completely dealt with. Then you bring him back after he has been cleansed and purged and purified. But over here, they took everything that belonged unto Achan. They dealt with the sin. No wonder the Lord loved these people afterward. He showed his favor over them. If you want the favor of God to be upon you, then you must do as the scripture has said. You know, when some people are under discipline, uh, maybe they have done something wrong and we say, well, this is wrong, that is wrong. There will be members of the church that will still be going to their houses to eat and say, well, I know you are under discipline and I'm a part of the church. I agree with the discipline because you are the wrong one. You committed adultery. You committed fornication. You must suffer for it. But I'm praying for you that they will soon restore you. Can I have a plate of rice there? I am hungry. That one is not a serious member of the church. When people are under discipline, you leave their money with them. Don't take their money. Don't take their food. Don't take anything belonging to them. Let them understand and let them know that the church is unhappy with the sin they have committed. Then will they be serious and really pray through so that they will be completely restored. So then they took everything that pertained unto Joshua. Sorry, unto Achan. And then they were going to discipline him. Let us see in verse 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt them with fire. After they had stoned them with stones, and they raised up over him a great heap of stones unto, the, unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Acorn unto this day. The Lord is always happy with people that will sincerely deal with sin and put away sin from the midst of the people of God. And these the children of Israel dealt with the sin. They showed that they were not compromising with sin. And uh, this is the same thing we need to understand. If you notice in Acts chapter 5, sin was dealt with. 
If you notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when somebody had committed immorality with the wife of his father, that man was dealt with. He wasn't killed. In the New Testament, what is done is that they are excommunicated. They are disciplined and sent out of the church so that they do not partake in the privileges of the church anymore at that time until they repent. And we should be careful in our own lives that we do not allow sin to come into our lives. Because you know when sin comes in, it will bring defeat to your life. It will bring defeat to your family. There are some wives that are suffering. Because the protection of the Lord is not on the family. The man is unfaithful. is committing adultery and fornication. The wife may not know. The children may not know. But because of the sin in the life of that man, there's a problem in the family. Sometimes it is a business or the life or the ministry of the husband that is at stake because the wife is unfaithful. Or sometimes it is, you know, in a particular church, uh, the people are living in sin and the pastor knows that sin is in the camp, but he never finds out like Joshua. And he is not bold enough to discipline the people that are living in sin. Therefore, the power of God will not be in that church again. Because when you love the people and you pamper them, you compromise with them, and you do not have an eye to the glory of God, the Lord will not continue with such a group of people. I pray the Lord will continue with us in Jesus' name. That there will be no sin in our camp, no sin in our families, no sin in the members of the church in Jesus' name. If there is secret sin in your life, you know what to do? Before the Lord begins to publicize it and reveal it to the whole congregation, go to the Lord and go to the cross and deal with that sin and say, Lord, I know this is what I've done. Before the Lord exposes you, expose yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I have done. In conclusion, let me just show you this sin. Have you seen the judgment that came upon this individual? Let me just uh, go point by point. Number one, all Israel were there when eventually the sin was revealed. Everybody eventually knew that Achan was a sinner. It was exposed to every young person, every old person, every man and every woman. Number two, Achan and all the people that compromised with him were eventually separated from the people of Israel to be judged. Number three, all the things that he was hiding that nobody knew they came to light it was eventually revealed and then in this uh, particular case the innocent became cleared and the guilty became condemned number five all israel united together in stoning achan and all the people that cooperated or compromised with achan and the guilty people were stoned and burnt with fire after their death. Let me just uh, go over those six points again. Because you know, this is exactly what will happen at the end of time. When the books will be opened. And God will make all people to come before him. And the books will be opened at the white throne judgment. You know what will happen? Number one, all the people, all mankind shall see the sinners, the backsliders, the secret people that have been compromising. All the people will see at that time that you are an Achan. You may hide it now. And you may make people to feel you are righteous, you are holy. You may cover it all by preaching. Cover it all by praying. Cover it all by singing. Cover it all by church activities now. At the white throne judgment, your sin will be known to everybody. All over the world. All the people will gather together, the young and the old. Even your children, if you are a father, your children will know your secret sins. Your wife will know your secret sins. Your husband will know your secret sins. Everybody will know your secret sin. As all Israel eventually identified Achan, everybody will identify you as the sinner, as a criminal. Number two, as Achan and all his compromising family, was separated from Israel. So, on the last day, the goats shall be separated from the sheep. Here we are now, we are together. We sing together, we pray together, we fellowship together, and we share our lives together. We read the Bible together. Right now, we are together. The tares and the wheat, the goats and the sheep. But you see, on that day, you'll be separated from the people who have loved you. We have loved you because we don't know what you are doing. We don't know that you are committing sin in secret. Maybe you are even working together with us and we do not know your sin. On that day, you will be separated from the people of God. 
and the people of God, even though we have loved you, even though we have been worshipping together, we have been staying together, we will see you being taken away, extracted, excommunicated from the people of God to be thrown into the lake of fire. Number three, all the hidden things of darkness shall be brought to light. On Saturday night, you go to commit immorality, and then you come to church on Sunday. We don't know it now. It will be known at that time. You're still worshipping idol. You're still depending on juju power. Nobody knows it now, but all the hidden things of darkness will be known on that day. Everywhere you went, we will see it like we're seeing a, we're seeing a film show. Everything you said, everything that you use, every dark thing that has been in your life, every lie you covered up, every hypocrisy, every pretense, it will be seen on that day. And people will say, eh, somebody will call brother so and so. So this is how I was living. So he was using juju medicine. So he was using juju power. So he was committing adult watch. So and so. And he was a, you know, a very good member in our church. And he was be, be running up and down. Everybody will see the hidden things of darkness on that day. Everything will be brought to the light. Number four, as the innocent was cleared. And the guilty became charged and condemned. On the last day, the righteous will be vindicated. But you know today... When you catch a sinner, he will tell a lie against a righteous person. He will say, brother so-and-so is also there. And brother so-and-so will weep and cry and say, I don't know anything about it. He will say, ah, no, we did it together. Sister so-and-so is there. Sister so-and-so will cry and say, I don't know anything about it. But he will say, no, you are there. We did it together. On that day, God will justify the righteous. He will say, even though people lied against you, that you are a sinner, you are a backslider, you are a criminal, before everybody, before the whole world that will gather together, you will be justified before the Lord in Jesus' name. And all the people that have condemned you, they will swallow everything that they have said. Because on that day, the Lord will crown the righteous. And everything that people said against you, the people will know it was just a lie against your life. At that same time, those who are guilty, those who are unrighteous, they will be condemned. Number five, as all Israel united in stoning Achan's family, do you know the saints will judge the world? Those of us who are righteous will take part in the judgment. Oh, we'll say yes, that's what it should be done. We'll sit with Christ on his throne, judging the people of the world. And lastly, uh, as the guilty were burnt with fire in this story that I read to you now, after they are dead, so will everlasting fire be the portion of the lost. Everlasting fire will burn and burn the people that have gone into sin and they are not forgiven. They have not taken everything and put it under the mark of the blood of Jesus. On that day, there will be terrible judgment. Should the end of the world come now? Should Christ appear now? And should the white throne judgment be right now? Are you an Achan? If you are, since judgment day has not come, why don't you settle with the Lord and let everything be washed away and cleansed away and purified with the blood of the Lamb? There is still mercy today. There is still opportunity for you today to call upon the name of the Lord. Don't wait too late. Don't wait too late. If you wait too late, you may be separated from the people of God on the last day. Let's rise up and settle everything that may be in our lives. Settle everything before the judgment day. Judgment is coming or will be there. Those who have done evil, those who have done good. Will you be justified on that day by the Lord? Or are you living in secret sin? Are you a real child of God? Are you an Achan in the midst of the people of God today? You have a secret sin? You have a hidden work of darkness? God knows everything about your life. We cannot hide it from him. Are you sinning and causing problems for your family? Are you sinning and causing problems for your church? Are you a party to sinners and backsliders in your community? Do you know an Achan? And you are hiding that Achan? Thereby bringing defeat on the people of God? Settle it with the Lord. And do not let the judgment of God come upon you. 